Hidalgo Faring? Here. But Martin? I can't hear here. anybody but you, Brian. Peck? Here. Yeah. No, Rodriguez? Not good. Aaron, say here. Here? All right, they're here. Waters? They can't hear. So is the live stream, stream going? Hello. How about how much? 30 seconds. All right, so I'll make, I'll make sure I repeat anything that is substantial. And I'll, I'll, I'll define <laughs> substantial by anything that you would consider substantial, not just me. Fair enough? <clears throat> okay. okay. Yes, no information on donuts. Exactly, exactly. All right, Council Member Waters is here. Mary of Corn. All right, great, thank you. All right, let's go ahead. I would like to now call March 3rd, 2020, Longmont City Council regular session to order. Tonight's meeting is a little bit different because of the COVID-19 virus pandemic um, and the governor's uh, emergency orders. There are only 10 people allowed in a public gathering per order of the Centers for Disease Control. Thus, we've reduced staff and attendance and no public at all. And so uh, there's five council members. Uh, council member Christensen and council member Rodriguez are appearing by phone. We have our city manager, Eugene May, Don Quintana, and one member of the media who is uh, making sure the microphone's running. Harold? Uh, yes, Mayor. Council, um, I wanted to uh, let everyone know that we have talked to um, the council members. Um, Colorado Municipal League informed us that there were two individuals as part of the Colorado de delegation, not from Longmont, um, that ha did um, test positive for COVID-19 virus. And because of the interaction, Colorado Municipal League is suggesting that anyone who attended that conference and was part of the Colorado delegation that they um, self-isolate. Um, I will say that our two council members are not experiencing any symptoms. They're just simply following the guidance of the Centers for Disease Control, Colorado Department of Health, and the Colorado Municipal League. All right, great. So we miss you too, but thank you for doing what you need to. Um, so uh, let's go on. Let's go ahead. We had roll call. Let's say the pledge. We did roll call. I know we did, but that's why I said we did. We had roll call, but okay. let's say that. Do we have a flag in here? No. Well, we're, still, we're still saying the pledge. <laughs> Is there, yeah, just that way. Yeah. Virtual Case. flag. All right, virtual flag. It should be right there. Yeah. I pledge allegiance to, to the flag, flag of the United States, States of America, America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, God indivisible, with liberty and justice, justice for all. Cadence was off a little bit tonight, but that's okay. No flag. All right. All right, let's go ahead. We have no approval of minutes. Actually, um, so in order to protect residents, staff, and elected officials, Longmont residents were invited to provide public comment remotely by submitting their comments to city council in writing or via video or phone message in place of personally attending tonight's meeting. So I'm asking staff to go ahead and forward all those to us, and we will review those on our own time. Um, we're not going to go ahead and read all those tonight in public. Um, but I'm allowed to take things off and that's what we're doing and we're going to move on and get out of here as soon as possible. Approval of minutes. No minutes were submitted for approval. Um, do we have any agenda revisions or submission of documents and motions to direct the city manager for anything? Don, we have agenda revisions. We do. Mayor, I have your script. All right. So, yep. So we've got item 6A is an update on Longmont Public Media. Um, that has been postponed since it is not time critical as well as item 9C regarding O2 2011 or ordinance 2011 on special districts. And these are both being continued to, looks like May 26th, is that correct? May 12th, sorry. May 12th? May 12th. May 12th, all right. Finally, there's an updated version of the official statement for the proposed wastewater refunding bond, item 8A at council's desk. So um, be aware of those. All right, um, assuming that council members have nothing else to bring up, Let's just, just Dr. Dr. Waters, just yep. for clarification, um, under nine, we've got three items. The, the, so we are going to have a public hearing for item 9A? Uh, yes. Or wait, 9A? AA. For nine, 9A is a public oh. hearing on consolidated. Yes. Okay. Yep. Wait. So we're having a hearing in public, not a, not a public hearing. Not here. Correct. And we're not going to hear from the public. Yes, correct. Although people were invited to submit their right. comments via email, phone, video messaging, right. etc. So and we, didn't receive any. and we received none. So, 
All right, so let's go ahead. Uh, yeah, Mayor, if we yeah, did okay. receive comments on any of those on the second reading, we would need to read those, but we did not receive any comments on those items. Correct. All right. All right, so 4A, consideration of a policy for electronic participation in the Longmont City Council meetings. Eugene. Mayor and Council, Eugene May, City Attorney. Uh, so this was sent out before Harold had declared a state of emergency. That's how quickly things are moving. However, I think it still provides uh, excellent guidance and it would still be applicable because it's upon um, the city manager's activation of the emergency operations center, which he has done. And therefore, this sets forth some guidelines uh, for electronic participation in city council meetings. The Longmont um, Municipal Code authorizes telephonic or electronic meetings when a state of emergency has been declared, and that's how we're operating tonight. These policies would just further uh, define how those meetings are to be conducted. All right. So, Aaron and Polly, did you hear that? I assume not, right? Yeah. Okay. So basically, we're going to be we're going to be uh, voting on 4A, uh, the policy for electronic participation in Longmont City Council meetings. Um, Her Harold, under a, when he declares an emergency. Um, the, that 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 ordinance allows us to to have meetings uh, remotely, which is what we're doing now. But this particular, uh, but Eugene said that this particular uh, consideration will allow us to operate not under emergency. That makes sense. Yeah. So what do we need to do, Eugene? Mayor and Council, if Council if Council would like to approve uh, the policy, then you can. Um, it does affect city council meetings. You would be suspending the council rules of procedure in order to adopt this. So do we need to suspend the council rules of procedure? Correct. I move, I move that we suspend the council rules of procedure. Second. Does anybody want to say anything? All right. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. All right. So that, so that we just suspended the rules of procedure. It passed unanimously. Um, and uh, let's go ahead. I will actually move that we adopt the policy for electronic participation in Longmont City Council meeting. Second. As proposed by, proposed by Eugene May in the packet. Second. Second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Was that an aye, Polly? All right, so that passes unanimously. All right, um, I'm gonna go ahead and pull 4B, 2020 legislative bills recommended for city council position. Anybody opposed to that? All right. Uh, 4C, City Council Extending Emergency Declaration in Order 2020-01. Do we have a motion? So moved. Second. Council Member Peck. Um, I think Harold wanted to say something. I just want to give council a quick update on Hold on, I don't think your mic's on. Go ahead. Hello? Now it's on. Now it's on. I just wanted to give council a quick update on everything that we have because this is an opportunity for me to update you and the, the community if that's okay. Sure. You know what? Um, can, they, can people see me when, uh, can people see, I mean, right? So can you take my seat? Why don't you talk and give this update? No, no, but what I mean is I'm going to trade you seats while you talk. So that okay. way I don't have to repeat it to yep. Pauline Air. Why are you doing this? Oh, oh, oh. Oh, for Pauline here. Yeah. I have this next to me, but. I can sit by here. Good idea. Uh, so, wow, this feels different. I like it over here. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Mayor Council, what I wanted to do quickly is to give um, you and the community an update in terms of everything that we have going on regarding um, uh, what, what our staff is doing related to the COVID-19 virus. As you know, we um, issued a, a disaster declaration yesterday. Um, we have now officially closed all city buildings in terms of the public um, utilizing those buildings. Um, that was actually a result of the um, guidance that we received and the orders issued by the governor of Colorado and the, the Centers for Disease Control. We've also created a number of teams to deal with issues that we're seeing as a result of those actions. Um, Michelle Waite is um, working on a senior services team. Specifically, we're focusing on food, housing, medical issues, hospice care. 
Um, we have a, a team um, now with um, Christina Pacheco and Jeff Friesner um, looking at child care for critical personnel. We're hearing that that's becoming more and more of an issue for the health care system and for our staff. Um, we also have Ellie Berto working on a broader county initiative regarding homelessness and how we deal with the individuals that are potentially um, in, uh, infected with COVID-19 and how we work to create our existing shelters so we don't have that issue. And then we have a broader food group working with Christina and the human service funding group in terms of looking at that issue. We've also created a business team. Um, the city representatives are Joni Marsh. Um, and I just dropped Peter's last name, Gibbons. Gibbons. Um, they're also working with the Chamber of Commerce, DDA, Visit Longmont, LEDP, and other business owners in terms of evaluating the current situation. Um, we're also going to ramp up an economic team um, internally to look at what are the potential economic impacts and what that means to us. We have started that work, but we're on the front end of it. Um, in addition, we're uh, focusing on employee support in terms of how do we support all of our, the members of our team that are engaged in, in, in working numerous issues. We have fully moved into our COOP plan, which is a continuity of operations plan, which looks at staffing, pulling critical personnel from certain positions um, in terms of we know that we have certain licenses in play and we have duplicate individuals. We are making sure that we have some folks at home where if someone does get sick, we can continue to provide those services. Um, public safety has increased the patrol at grocery stores based on what we've seen at other communities. We are not saying we're seeing an issue. I'm going to be very clear. Um, we have not seen any issues to this point. These are just actions that we're taking to try to prepare for and deal with these other um, challenges. I know that there were some questions about restrooms and parks. We are, um, we have a number of those open um, and we're looking at opening others. We evaluated keeping those areas, uh, the, how we sanitize those and the impact of closing them versus leaving them open and we felt that we had more of a risk if we kept them closed. We are going to increase the sanitation schedule but we would still say that people need to be cognizant of uh, when they go into those facilities. At that point, um, Jim Golden is in the other room, so I'm going to give him some time to, to move uh, in this direction since I'm not at my computer. But one of the things that we do is every year as we're closing the books, um, we have the... Uh, Don, can you go get Jim? I don't know what the delay is. I forgot the name of the fund. Um, one of the things that we do every year is as we're going through and we're closing out the previous year, um, we have a certain amount of money that... Um, we move into um, one of the, and I can't remember exactly which fund it is, um, and Jim can clarify that information, but we move that money into our, uh, the fund balance in, in to deal with these issues, and it becomes a little more difficult for us to touch. One of the things that council can do is direct us not to move, um, here he comes. I forgot the name of the fund, Jim, and I'm not at my computer. <laughs> so it's the uh, Stabilization Reserve Fund okay. in our, in our uh, Emergency Reserves and the General Fund. Right. So it's Emergency Reserve Stabilization. When we close the books out, we typically move the funding in there. Uh, we think there's probably going to be about $1.6 million. Is that what you indicated? So in our budget, we, we uh, said we had projected that we would be able to put 1.67 million from last year's operations into that stabilization reserve fund, which we would do when we close the books for 2019. So we're suggesting that we not put that in there, but instead leave it within the general funds fund balance to help us offset any revenues coming in short for 2020. And I just need direction from council to do that. Is that, uh, Jim, that's one of our financial policies. If I were to get into the, in the financial policy booklet or manual, I would see that policy. That's correct. We have a financial policy that spells out the general funds reserves and yeah. there's three so layers the, of it. So would the motion be to, to suspend that policy for, what's the right motion here? I think the motion is just to, to not uh, put those reserves into the general fund stabilization reserve. Then I'm going to move that we direct staff not to to move those funds into the general fund stabilization fund, but make them move them into the general fund and make them available for use in 2020. 
Let me let me clarify for Polly and Aaron. So, uh, Polly and Aaron, the thing that um, as part of the budget, I don't know if you heard this, we we had moving 1.67 million dollars into the emergency fund uh, via the stabilization fund. Um, and the motion was, and, and what we said is council can direct us not to do that. That way we would have those available to deal with any shortfalls that we may um, see related to the, to the COVID-19 COVID issue. Council Member Waters made a motion to um, provide staff with that direction and it was seconded by Council Member um, Hidalgo Ferry. Um, I think that's a good idea. Anyway. Okay. That's it. Yep, we heard you were trading seats. All right, there's a motion on the floor. It's been seconded. Uh, do we have any further debate, discussion? All right, seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 All right, all opposed say nay. It's, that passes unanimously. All right, let's go on to having a hard time not licking my fingers to change the pages tonight. I'm fighting the urge. Fight the urge. Here, you need some of this. Some hand sanitizer? No, no, I just, it's just dry. Oh, I don't think I'm, I'm good. All right, so let's go ahead and move on to uh, uh, the consent agenda. So we'll start with item 8A, we, ordinance. Go ahead. 4C, do we need to? No, we're not, what I'm saying is we're going to read it first. I'm going to read it, and then we'll pull it. Oh, okay. Okay. 4C. So, yep. So, 8A, Ordinance 2020-12, an ordinance authorizing the issuance of the City of Longmont Enterprise Wastewater Revenue Refunding Bonds, Series 2020. Uh, public hearing and second reading scheduled for March 31st, 2020. 8B, Ordinance 2020-13, a bill for an ordinance authorizing the City of Longmont to lease the real property known as Vance Brand Municipal Airport, Hangar Parcel H18, to Richard D. Sykes. Public hearing and second reading scheduled for March 31st, 2020. 8C, Ordinance 2020-14, a bill for an ordinance authorizing the City of Longmont to lease the real property known as Vance Brand Municipal Airport, hangar parcel H18C to Zulu LLC. Public hearing and second reading scheduled for March 31st, 2020. 8D, Ordinance 2020-15, a bill for an ordinance authorizing the City of Longmont to amend the leases for Vance Brand Municipal Airport hangers parcels, at, parcels known as H7, H8, H9, and H10. The public hearing and second reading scheduled for March 31st, 2020. Ordinance 8E, uh, which is Ordinance 2020-16, a bill for an ordinance authorizing the City of Longmont to lease the real property known as Vance Brand Municipal Airport Hangar Parcel H68 to Four Dots LLC. Uh, public hearing and second reading scheduled for March 31st, 2020. Uh, 8F, which is Resolution 2020-25, a resolution of the Longmont City Council approving the intergovernmental agreement between the City and the Longmont Downtown Development Authority for support and services. 8G, Resolution 2026, a resolution of the city, a resolution of the Council of the City of Longmont, Colorado, finding the petition for annexation of a parcel of land located in Boulder County, State of Colorado, known as the Sugar Mill Annexation, substantially complies with Colorado Revised Statute Section 3112-1071. 8H, Resolution 2020-27, a resolution of the City of Longmont, Colorado, authorizing the assignment of the City's private activity bond allocation for 2020 to the Housing Authority of the City of Longmont, Colorado, providing other details in connection therewith, and providing an effective date. 8I, approval of 2020 City Council Work Plan. 8J, approved 2020 Neighborhood Improvement Program Grant Recommendations. Are there any that you would like to pull? Councilmember Peck. Oh, hold on one second, Polly. Let's go, Councilmember uh, Peck. Yes, I'd like to pull 8A. So we're going to pull 8A. Polly? I would like to pull G. G. Okay. Dr. Waters? Uh, 8I. So A, G, and I. And J. And J. All right, so you're going to pull A. Oh, I'm going to need a pen now. So that was J, I, G, and A. All right. Do we have a motion for the consent agenda? Minus A, G, I, and J. So moved. I'll second that. That's been moved and seconded. Any further discussion? All right. Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Polly? All right. That's, that, that, that passes unanimously. 
Um, all opposed? I'm sorry, all opposed? No? Okay, now it passes unanimously. All right, um, let's go ahead and start with 8B, Ordinance 2020-13, a bill for an ordinance to authorize the city of Longmont to lease the real property known as Vance Brand. I'm oh, sorry, I'm sorry. We're gonna start with, we're actually, she's standing up there. We're going on to nine. Ordinance is on second reading. So this is public, the pub, so uh, let's see here. This is 9A, a public hearing on consolidated annual performance report, or also known as CAPER, for 2019 Community Development Block Grant, or CDBG, and home programs. And it looks like we have a presentation by Kathy Fudler. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Kathy Fedler, Housing and Community Investment Manager for the city. Um, and sorry, uh, this is something that is required by HUD and they did not give us any kind of waiver. So in order to be compliant with our um, submission and be able to submit the um, caper by uh, March 31st, we had to go ahead and, and hold this. So I'll be as brief as I can possibly be. <clears throat> so, um, Briefly going through some of this uh, community development block grant or CDBG program accomplishments. Our general rehab program um, spent about $140,800 um, to correct code violations, health and safety issues, energy efficiency improvements, and homeowner requested um, changes for seven households at an average cost of about $20,000. Um, and this just shows a couple of pictures of some of the things that we did. Um, this particular one was um, replacing some flooring um, that was pretty bad and some um, cabinet um, upgrades. <clears throat> um, and then this one is an outside one where the roof was replaced and the outside siding, et cetera, and decking was replaced. Um, we also <clears throat> assisted 17 households at an average cost of just under $7,500 um, with the mobile home repair program, which provides grants to low and moderate income mobile home owners to keep their homes safe, and a total of $126,600 was spent on that program. The architectural barrier removal program, making homes accessible for um, persons with disabilities. We spent about $61,500 um, this year, assisting 13 households at an average cost of about $4,700. And then on the emergency grant program, we helped six households with hot water or furnace replacement, electric repairs, and um, doing some water sewer issues at an average cost of $1,350 for a total of about $8,000 spent on this program. <clears throat> so in total, we spent over $380,000, um, assisted 43 households in total. Um, some households got a few more, um, could use multiple programs, at a total average cost of about $8,800. This is a decrease in volume from 2018, um, where we spent $455,000 for 40 households at an average cost of 10,000. We are continuing to struggle with having sufficient contractors to work and bid on jobs. Every job's taking longer to complete because we only have a couple contractors that are working and um, we're having to um, bid each um, job multiple times in order to get um, something that we can move forward with. Um, we also provided a grant to Boulder County Housing um, for their housing counseling program. We gave them $50,000, they spent 40, 47500 so we'll recapture that difference and reallocate it um, in 2020. <clears throat> um, 288 residents, uh, Longmont residents were assisted and it leveraged $364,000 for this program. We also um, approved the security deposit program to support um, local and LHA funded vouchers for um, folks who are experiencing homelessness and were able to um, move into housing. Um, that program, the vouchers did not, the money didn't come through so until 2020, so we're working on contracting on that now. Um, and that will be added with the 2020 funding we set aside as well. So altogether for CDBG, um, we had about a 33% expenditure ratio, which is less than the 50% expenditure ratio we had in 2018. Um, our 2019 timeliness ratio was 1.43, which is required to be um, below 1.5, so we squeaked by there. Um, we leveraged about 64 cents for every dollar in CDBG funds. Um, <coughs> excuse me. 14.6% um, of our 2019 funding was spent on administrative services. 
which is just slightly above um, what we spent in 2018, we're allowed to go up to 20% of our grant. And then 98.9% .9 of the funding spent in 2019 benefited low and moderate income residents. Um, and the requirement is that 70% of our funds go there. So we exceeded that um, uh, mechanism. So some of the reasons why so much of our CDBG funds are, were unspent this year, um, this shows graphically um, where the unspent funds are. So the blue line is the um, budgeted funds in each category. The red line is the 2019 expenditures, and then the green line is what was unspent. The mobile home repair program was the only program where we spent more than we left unspent. So obviously we need to get our rehab funding out into the community. About $452,000 um, is sitting in, in rehab that needs to get out into the community over, um, accumulated over a couple of years. We did not receive our grant agreement until September, so projects um, totaling 305000 could not begin until late fall. So getting a late start means you can't spend as much money can, in that year. Oh, sorry. Can we, Aaron mm -hmm. and Paula, you both still there? Aaron? Aaron? Yeah, I'm still here. All right, okay, never mind. Okay, I thought we lost them. <laughs> All right, it just sounded like they disconnected. Just making sure, I mean, I know you guys can't hear, they're just going through the slides right now. You guys have copies of the slides, yeah, right? I can see that. Yeah, that, that's it. I can see the, uh, the okay. Okay. And then the other thing that happened in 2019 is we received over 300000 in program income from the Thistle loan repayment at the very end of 2019. So those funds are showing here as unspent, but we didn't have time to allocate and spend them during the program year. Some of the affordable housing program accomplishments, we did a $300,000 loan to purchase Longmont Mobile Home Park in 2019, $600,000 loan to Thistle to refinance and rehab their properties, 110,000 loan to Habitat to do pre-development work for the Rogers Road site, $287,000 loan to in between to um, complete construction of the MICA homes. And then we had two pilot projects, the ADU stock plans and the planning facilitator. <coughs> um, I think I gave a brief update last time, maybe during the 2020 action plan or sometime it seemed like a, a brief update, but real quickly, the ADU stock plans, we do have that already. Building permit has approved those. Um, we should be ready to launch that um, in April. I'm just working on the financing package to put together um, to make that attractive for folks to um, build ADUs and rent them at an affordable rent for a period of time. And then the planning facilitator contract has been working really well. Um, we've got several projects that have, um, are in the process that are being helped. Two of them have gone um, all the way through planning approval and are into building permits and actually starting construction. Um, and then the, um, there's about four that are still going through the review process. And then on the city-owned properties where you um, had um, converted some of the um, homes that had been purchased under open space or water, with water sewer funds to affordable rentals. We are moving forward with um, one is rented to Habitat and one will probably be bidding here soon to do some rehab on it. And then as the uh, leases expire, we're converting those. <clears throat> we also provided 157,800 in fee waivers um, from the affordable housing fund. For, to support 66 rental homes at an average of 23, uh, just under 2,400 per home. Um, we conducted three application cycles in 2019 with 11 applications reviewed, five projects approved for affordable housing funding, five under CDBG, and one home that will be coming back to you. The inclusionary housing program was instituted, which was another reason why we didn't do a very good job of spending our CDBG funds. We had staff that was working on that to get that up and running. Um, and then we continued participation in our regional affordable housing partnership with over six p um, community presentations made, the ballot measure being explored, uh, afford possible affordable housing trust fund, governance and distribution formula prepared, and then the home wanted education um, and support campaign was begun this year. So I'd be happy to answer any questions. Otherwise, um, we'll hold the public hearing mm -hmm. and then there's a possible motion there. All right, great, thank you. Uh, Marsh Martin. 
Oh, Hi. Uh, by, by the way, we were told by Scott Converse at Longmont Public Media that we're not getting picked up, so speak directly into the microphones. Stop so. stealing my thunder, Mr. Oh, Mayor. Oh, what you're going to do? Yeah. <laughs> I don't actually have any questions. That was a good presentation, Kathy. All right. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, are there any questions from council? Okay, let's go ahead and open the pub. So are there, are there any questions, Polly or Aaron? No, I just wanted to say uh, to Kathy, this is a great job. You've helped hundreds of people get, keep, and maintain their houses, and that's what we need. So thanks so much. Did you hear that? Yeah, we all heard it. We all, we were all, we, they, did you not hear the applause? <laughs> okay, there was a, there was a fun thunderous applause Molly. <laughs> I'm kidding of course all right so let's go ahead and uh, were there any comments submitted for the public hearing on this all right, mayor we did not receive any public comments on this item all right so given that this is a close I mean not close it's a public meeting but there are no public present um, so given that there's no uh, no one to comment um, I'm not going to ask anyone else if they want to speak. Let's go ahead and close the public hearing. Can I have a motion um, for or, uh, for uh, uh, approving and accepting the the uh, consolidated annual performance report for the 2019 Community Development Block Grant and Home Programs? I move acceptance of 8A, please. I'll second that. All right. 9A. 9A. It's 9A. 9A. All right. So it's been moved and uh, seconded that we accept uh, 9A. Anybody else? Any other comments? Polly, Aaron, any comments? Yep. All right. Hearing all right. Hearing none. Let's go ahead and vote. All in favor, say aye. 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 Oppose. Aye. All right. Oppose. Say nay. All right. That passes unanimously. All right. 9B ordinance 2020-10, a bill for an ordinance conditionally approving the vacation of four 10-foot wide utility easements in the Prairie Village subdivision, generally located adjacent to Alpine St Street. Are there any questions from council? All right, uh, Harold, did we receive any public comments regarding the public hearing? Uh, no, Mayor, we did not receive any public comments. All right, so we're going to go ahead and close the public hearing. Um, can I have a motion? So Council Mayor Peck. I move 2020-10. All right, I'll, uh, that's been seconded by Council Member Waters. All in favor, say aye. 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 All right, that passes unanimously. Okay, let's go ahead and do 9C, Ordinance 2020-11, a bill for an ordinance amending Chapter 4. Was moved to no, we, that was removed. Oh, that was removed. Yeah, thank you, thank you. So, all right, let's move on to items removed from the consent agenda. Let's start in order. Item 8A, Ordinance 2020, an ordinance authorizing the issuance of the City of Longmont Enterprise Wastewater Revenue Refunding Bonds. Who pulled that? I pulled that one. Okay, Council Member Peck. So, um, first of all, I want to... Uh, thank Jim Golden for sending out that uh, really that the, your email explaining what's happening here but for our listeners for our residents can you explain the volatility at this moment in the bond market and what that means for this this bond financial officer so um, we did include in the council packet originally some projections on the amount of savings that we would gain from the refunding of the wastewater bonds uh, from 2010. Uh, the Fed has cut rates in recent weeks and days, but also last week uh, there was a lot of volatility in the municipal bond market. Uh, they took a turn for the worse and because um, of the investor uncertainty, uh, some bond investors have moved out of the municipal bond market, which in turn has, has raised the prices of municipal bonds. Um, they've been moving out to basically uh, get more liquidity. Uh, so quite a bit of that movement did take place over three days last week, where the, um, the bond market ro rose 94 basis points over three days. So, uh, so what the impact is on our potential savings, we had projected, and we actually had projected this as we started this process in late January, our present value savings at that point in time based on that market rate ha was $597,000. Uh, it's dropped to $470,000 of sa present value savings. 
Um, so that's um, originally a 6.9% of the refunded amount of the bonds in, in potential savings is, is dropping to 5.4% of the refunded amount of the bonds. Our debt policy has a targeted minimum for a refunding of uh, 5%. That's um, based on old regulations in refundings that no longer are necessarily in place. But nevertheless, we are still trying to keep to that sort of uh, a target, at least at this point in time. So uh, the issue itself does not go to sale until April 29th. It needs to uh, wait till a month after the ordinance passes. And so at that point in time, there's no telling what the market will be like then. We can go to market. Uh, if at the point right before then we think it's bad to go to market at that time, we can just step back and not go to market or we can go and accept bids and decide whether to, or open bids and decide whether to accept one or not, or we can turn them down and decide to go at another time. So this ordinance authorizes to, us to sell the bonds any time over the, the next year. Uh, from a savings perspective, the sooner we do it before we actually make more debt payments, we'll have more savings. So we have to take all that into consideration, but just wanted to let you know what the implications were of those changes, but the ordinance does give us a lot of flexibility. All right, and I'm imagining, I forgot, I was gonna have you come up and sit here, because I'm sure. Do you have any questions on uh, either one of you, Polly, Aaron, uh, regarding 9A? Basically, Jim Golden said, it's all gonna be okay, trust him. <laughs> <laughs> it's the least of our problems. Explanations over the, you know, and um, I, I don't have any questions. I think it'll, we'll just have to see. Aaron? Like everything else. <laughs> Aaron, I have no questions. All right. No questions. So thank you, Jim. We really needed to hear that. The public did. So um, having said that, I, I move to pass 2020-12. Second. All right. That's been moved and by Councilmember Peck, seconded by Councilmember Martin. Any further discussion? All right, hearing none, let's go ahead and vote. All in favor, say aye. 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 All right, that passes unanimously. All right, let's move on to uh, 8G, Resolution 2020-26, a resolution of the Council of the City of Longmont, Colorado, Colorado, finding the petition for annexation of a parcel of land located in Boulder County, State of Colorado, known as the Sugar Mill Annexation, uh, substantially complies with the Colorado Revised Statute, Section 3112-1071. Who pulled this one? Is that you, Polly? All right. So I'm going to go ahead and switch places with you, if you don't mind. Okay. Not you, Polly, but Joni Marsh. Councilmember Christensen, this is. Uh, Assistant City Manager Joni Marsh, did you have a question? Get really well, you gotta get right yeah, in it. I okay. Um, in the packet, it says uh, that this is the point. Hey, Mark, Joni, can you write that one? Put it up. Joni, just hold it. Pull it out, hold it up. It looks like NIT, which isn't, I'm sure, their name. Um, the petition for annexation um, on page, it's my page 334 but i don't think that's relevant to you anyway on the second um page um just above the owner's signature which is unreadable uh they are asking for a zoning of r dash mn which is residential something or other what is that so need the mic I can. I'm just trying to find the information. Sorry. So, so this this property is actually asking for agricultural zoning as part of their annexation. This is a parcel that was referred by council back in March. This parcel will not be developed. It is ancillary to the parcel due west of it that is being developed with um, single family and duplex housing. And this parcel will re will be zoned agricultural. Well, yeah. 
I don't. I'm puzzled by the fact that they, the petitioner asked for RMN. I don't know what RMN means, but I know it means um, I'm looking. Okay, I'm sorry, um, Council Member. I am not seeing that on the petition I'm looking at online right now. However, the designation both in the comp plan and what they're asking for, to my knowledge, is agricultural. So that could just be an error on the applicant's part on their petition of what they're asking for. housing is that what we're doing here well no we're not yet mm -hmm. we're just making leaving it as agricultural for now correct correct so okay. council member Hidalgo was kind enough to point out on the petition what you're looking at so that zoning request of RMN does not match the actual correct I see that now yeah. my apologies okay. um, so this is not going to be developed into housing. The 17 acres will remain agriculturally zoned um, in the city of Longmont. The houses are on an already annexed parcel due west. Right. Okay. All right. Well, this is just to move it forward, but we every time we move it forward, we never stop it. We just keep moving it forward. Okay. That answers my question. All right, are there, are there further questions or comments pertaining to item 8G? All right, do we have a motion, Polly? Uh, I prefer to have other. All right, I'll go ahead and do it. I, I move resolution 2020-26. Second. All right, that's been moved by myself and seconded by Councilmember Martin. Let's go ahead and vote. All in favor, say aye. 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 All right, that passes unanimously. All right, let's go ahead and move on to item uh, 8I, approval of the 2020 City Council Work Plan. Dr. Waters, was that you who pulled that? I am, <clears throat> I am the one who pulled that. Uh, so Sandy, is this you? Um, <coughs> Happy to help. And, and Sandy, I'm gonna ask, ask you to come up and you can sit at my desk and make sure that Polly and Aaron hear you. Only for you two. Member Water, Sandy Cedar, Assistant City Manager. I am the compiler of the document. What can I answer for you? Uh, well, first of all, I appreciate your work on this. Um, but I do have, um, I don't know, I, I guess questions, and, and I would offer recommendations if they seem appropriate as we go through the conversation. Okay. And I don't want to get lost in the details of the activities because there's a ton of activities. But um, when, we, uh, when, when we discussed in our retreat on February 7th, I think, uh, the, what we, you know, we talked about the silver tsunami and what we knew was coming in terms of needs for senior centers, for our seniors, and, and that's reflected in the vision statement. Uh, I asked the question that day, or I thought, maybe it wasn't clear, um, whether or not we would see a, excuse me, a new goal added to this section. And I thought the answer was yes, but we, we haven't. I, I see uh, both in the vision statement, the reference, however, uh, which makes sense, uh, to add older adults and not have it reflected as a goal, however, it doesn't make as much sense to me. So um, my question would be why not, or my suggestion would be that we at least consider adding a goal that would say something like the goal would be to ensure housing and related critical services for all of our senior citizens. So, Council Member Waters, Sandy Cedar, Assistant City Manager, let me take a look because um, as it turned out, there was already a section about seniors, particularly, 
And so we added the direction from the council retreat onto that section that already existed. So let me find it real fast and I'll be able to share that. Well, I, I know there's activity in here. Um, well, at, at one point when underneath the goal around, yeah, there we go. Underneath goal A, 3.2, there is a section about providing resources and opportunity to thrive for seniors. And that's where we added the activities that you discussed during your retreat because it was, it was already a segment. We had segmented the um, goal A3. Let me find that goal. Yeah, it's kind of hard to scroll back and forth and pick up the details, it's, I know. It's a very ambitious yeah. work plan. Well, so, I know, given everything else that's going on in the world right now, this is probably, <laughs> you've got to look at this and go, are really, are we going to talk about well, that? Well, I, I do want to make sure you know that, you know, that we certainly put that, place, place the council's wishes into the work plan. Goal A3, focus on making sure our most vulnerable residents have the resources to opportunity and opportunity to thrive. We broke those up into the categories of youth, and seniors and so it is in the seniors category that we've placed it underneath that goal you're right we have also changed the vision statement to be able to reflect uh, the full journey of our seniors um, and then michelle Waite was able to add pieces of the age well plan here um, under goal a 3.2 um, so if you'd like something a little more robust we can certainly take a look at that but that's why it doesn't have something separated because it was it was already there all right. My, well, I, the listen. I know there's a ton of work, and I don't want to quibble over over s small stuff. I, for me, um, if it were perfect, I guess, uh, if, having made the statement, if there's not going to be a goal, then we would have an objective, and providing resources probably isn't the way I would think of as an objective. Um, it would be an activity, unless we put a measure on it. So that's a for what it's worth comment, um, and I won't. I'll just. I'll just leave it at that. But if I were to scroll down to vision, to the second vision, the vision for Longmont Places, and uh, I look at what we added, which I think is appropriate in terms of the, our 100% renewable energy goal. When I see, I see in this case we did add two goals, um, that, which is a good thing. I just wish they were stated as goals. They're really okay. stated as activities. Um, and again, and this is, you know, th th this will be, I'm the broken record, I know people will will think of this as um, unimportant. I don't think of it as unimportant. Uh, if we're going to have a goal, to state as a goal statement in taking actions, if the goal is to be active or active or busy, that would be a good goal. But that's not the goal. Right? The goal is a healthier climate. Uh, and, and if we're, uh, we don't want to just work with Part, Platte River, what we want is 100% renewable energy with a target for, or, or a trajectory for what that looks like. So B5 and B6 look to me like uh, statements that we intend to do things. And um, we would be easy to evaluate success on those because all we have to do is take actions and work with somebody. And we've, we've met the goal. I see. So Council Member Waters, are you saying that you would rather just say that we will achieve 100% renewable power for life by 2030 and take out the reference that would to be more, That would be a goal power? statement. No, you know, we, you, 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 so yeah, that would be the goal statement. And on the, on the other one, I, if, we, if, if you're gonna make a goal statement, it might read something like ensure a healthier climate for future generations and prepare our community to adapt for the impacts of climate change. Okay. That would be a goal statement. If, now if you can, that's now something you have to, that the council would agree to, we'd happy to change yeah. those in there. Well, so, uh, so, the, so the mayor and the council can decide what they wanna do with it. For me, I, I, I appreciate the work, I'm just saying, uh, those don't quite measure up in my view of what we're trying to achieve here just in terms of our our intent and how we're going to evaluate our effectiveness I would like to move to adopt the wording revision suggested by council member waters I'll second that All right, we're changing, the, there's motion and a second, and the motion is adopting the suggestions of Dr. Waters, um, pursuant to the language to better reflect uh, goal statements. We are not at this time uh, passing ordinance, or resolution 8G, that'll be a second motion. So any comments or discussion based on that motion? Councilmember Peck? Um, I, I would like to see those in writing before I do this, because I didn't quite understand what he was saying. So. Um, before I would vote on moving that forward, I would like it 
I would like to see in writing what exactly he's talking about. And Council Member Peck, we're just removing the first several words of those two goals. Right? We wouldn't be changing anything else on it. Okay, would because you like I didn't have it in front of me. I couldn't find it that fast. Could I, re so. could I restate it for you? Yes, please. Would that be all right? Yes. Okay. Let me pull it back up here. So what I understood Council Member Waters to say is under goals, the last goals of B, right now it says for B, goal B5, right now what it says is work with Platte River Power Authority to achieve 100% renewable power for life by 2030. Okay. We would change that to remove work with Platte River Power Authority. We would just say achieve 100% renewable energy for power for life by 2030. That's the first one. Because the action underneath would obviously be to work with Platte River, but the goal is then a goal statement. B6, take actions that will over time create, a, create support, a healthier climate for future generations and helps to prepare and adapt our community for the impacts of climate change. We would remove the whole first section of that so that we just say, ensure a healthier climate for future generations and help prepare and adapt our community for the impacts of climate change. Okay. That's, that's the motion. Is that correct, Council Member correct. Waters? Thank you. All right, so there's a motion on the table, and then also as a, by way of reminder, we will get this on second reading, so it will be in writing and we'll get a chance to see it. Thank you. All right, all in favor? Second reading. Oh, it's a resolution, that's true. It's, so it's no, no second plan. reading. Thank you very much. All right, so there's a motion on the table, um, changing the wording of 8G. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, say nay. Polly, will you and I? Polly? Can we get Polly back on the line? Is that possible before we can continue? She, uh, she has to call in. I'll call her. All right, let's go ahead. Well, let's go ahead. Um, the motion, all, all, uh, do we, nay? Anybody opposed? All right, that passes, uh, that passes uh, six of us with council member Christensen absent. We lost her from the phone line and uh, hopefully we'll get her back soon. So, um, all right, uh, let's go ahead and it's almost eight o'clock. Uh, uh, do we have a motion to pass resolution 2020-26 as amended? Council Member Peck? Uh, we're, we're on to the next one, aren't we? No, no, we're gonna, now we're no. gonna vote on, is there a motion? Okay. Um, I'm sorry, uh, 8I, not 8G. Okay, yes, um, I move to approve 8I. All right. All right, got Paul, are you back? Do I have to answer this? I think so. It's a phone. I don't know how to mean. <laughs> Ollie? 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 All right, let's go ahead and vote on 8I, and then we're gonna take a, uh, it's been moved by Councilmember Peck, was it seconded? By Susie. By Councilmember Hidalgo Faring. So let's go ahead and vote. All, approve, all, all in favor of approving the 2020 council work plan as amended by Dr. Waters, say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. All right, so that passes 6-4 six, uh, with, uh, six with council member Christensen absent, but to, to no fault of her own. So let's, okay, great. We just, we. She's there. That's all right. We basically made some minor wording changes to uh, eight. All right, and then we approved eight I. So it passed six to O. Oh, but do you want to put it for the record what you would have voted? Yeah, all right, we got it. That's fine from Councilmember Christensen. All right, let's move on to eight J, approving the 2020 Neighborhood Improvement Program grant recommendations. Do we have a motion, or who who actually pulled that? Councilmember Hidalgo Faring? Yeah, actually, I just had a quick question on um, the, is there a time frame for when these funds need to be used by? So if we pass it tonight, are they gonna have, you know, given the circumstances, we don't know where we're gonna be <laughs> next week. So um, I just wanted to make sure that if we pass this tonight, will, um, will we be able to like push, push the projects down how far can we? Okay. Uh, uh, Mayor. So, hold on a second. So, uh, Polly and Aaron, uh, uh, Councilmember Dago Faring is basically asking about deadlines and how far we can push it off, et cetera, et cetera. 
and we're about ready to get a response from the city. Do you want to come up and sit here and answer that, please? Sure. All right, we'll let you comment in just a second, but city staff is going to respond to, to Susie's question real quick. So I'm going to have him come up, say what he has to say, then I'll be right back and I'll hold up the mic and you can make your comment. Okay, Polly? Yeah. All right. Okay, th thank you, uh, Mayor and uh, Council Member uh, uh, Hidalgo Faring. Uh, I'm Wayne Tomac. I'm the Neighborhood Resource Specialist for the city. Um, the NIP funding won't really be affected. Well, <laughs> in, in theory, won't be affected by this. Uh, once we approve it tonight, um, the neighborhoods will have basically the rest of the year uh, to complete their projects. Uh, we try to get it done as soon as possible because a lot of these projects, uh, because they're not really large projects, they have difficulty getting contractors uh, on board uh, so they either need to do it really early in the year March April or they need to do it late in the fall uh, so if this uh, the current situation uh, delays that they'll have uh, into the fall to get their projects done uh, and if, if it causes even more delays uh, we can carry that uh, those projects over into next year okay thank you I just think to that question what I would say is on many of these things um, we're just gonna have to do our best um, as we're seeing the situation unfold and be flexible as we're looking at these things. Um, that's really becoming a mantra of mine right now. Uh, be flexible and, and know we may have to move at any point. So uh, we will see. All right, Polly, go ahead. You have the floor. What's your comment? Well, in looking at the map, I noticed that there is not a single project in either Old Town West Side or East Side, or any any of the poorer neighborhoods. So all of these are going to neighborhoods. That, they require a match first of all. So the neighborhoods have to be able to match whatever money they get from the city. And it seems to me that these are going to, it looks like to me, that these are all master plan communities that have their own HOAs. Shouldn't those HOAs be doing this sort of stuff? I, I don't, I, I, it seems to me this is um, kind of just increases the stuff because poor neighborhoods can't afford to even ask for the money because they have to match it. So that's just my comment. So, Wayne, uh, the, the question was neighborhoods that don't have HOAs, um, and I guess the council member uh, Christensen thought that all of these were going to neighborhoods that were HOAs, um, and I guess it's just how, how have those grants been distributed over time? Okay. So, hold on. Come on up. Mayor, uh, Councilwoman Christensen. Yeah. Um, so, so the grants are available to any registered neighborhood. Uh, right now we have 54 uh, registered neighborhoods. Um, traditionally about 70 to 75 percent of our registered neighborhoods have HOAs, uh, really a function of the fact that most of our, our, our newer communities, almost any community built after really the, the mid 80s has an HOA in Longmont. Uh, and so we don't make any kind of discrimination based on whether they have HOAs or not. Um, the only real difference between them is that um, if they do have HOAs, I think they're a little bit more likely because they have extra funds that they can bring to the community contribution. Um, and we do, because HOAs have that benefit, we also do give uh, independent neighborhoods that don't have an HOA uh, a bonus in the NGLA evaluation that tries to just equalize that a little bit because otherwise the HOAs would always be evaluated higher for having a bigger community contribution to it. Yeah, that's good that you do that. And that's something we've adjusted over, over the years to, to try to equalize that. Uh, and and uh, let me also respond that this year's uh, batch are all, all HOAs. 
Uh, that's fairly unusual. We usually have one or two independent neighborhoods that do apply. Um, the historic east side, for example, has received many NIP grants over the years. All right, thank you very much. Okay, do you have any other questions or comments, Polly? No. Nope. All right. Then, that said, where did my agenda go? New bag. All right, so um, do we have a motion? Sorry, Dr. Waters? Well, I can wait till after the motion if you want to make the motion. Um, okay, I make a motion. Okay, I make a motion. We move um, item 9, I'm sorry, 8J. Second. All right, it's been moved and seconded. Dr. Waters? Yeah, as the, as the council liaison to NGLA, I just wanna reflect for a few minutes, or a few seconds, hopefully, that uh, how well, oops, how well uh, Wayne organizes that whole, the whole neighborhood, neighborhood grant program. It is, uh, I knew nothing of the neighborhood grant program until I became a council liaison. And of all the good things that happens there, one of the, one of the most impressive is what happens with these neighborhood grants, number one. Number two, uh, you mentioned 54 neighborhoods, some of which are HOA, most of which are HOAs, not all. We have some registered neighborhoods. It, it's, it's interesting to me as I look at the group, and we've talked about this, it, I wish we saw more diversity. I think Councilmember Christensen's concern about the diversity of, of NGLA is a legitimate concern, and I know it's a concern of Wayne's, and I know it's a concern of the leadership of NGLA. Hold on one second. Councilmember Christians, you can't hear, but Dr. Waters just said he shares your concern of lack of diversity and would like to see more. So for neighborhoods that aren't registered, whether they are HOAs or not, I think one of them, I hope one of the messages, if anybody pays attention to these meetings, because uh, I've had these conversations with folks in neighborhoods and I've asked, are you a member of NGLA? Sometimes no, and I go on to say, gosh, you ought to get yourselves registered, whether you have an HOA or not, because there's so many benefits. The grant program is just part of that. It's what people share with one another, what they learn from one another, uh, what they learn about the city um, that is equally as important. So um, I, wish, I wish there were greater diversity. I think uh, people, I have, as I've watched the presentations, that those who make the presentations work hard. These neighborhoods think this through. They do terrific work. I mean, the projects are stunning. And, and the members of the NGLA who evaluate them, they're evaluated not by Wayne, they're evaluated by their, by their peers, right? Um, and, they're, and they don't get a pass. I mean, there's a rigorous scrutiny of these proposals. So people work hard both to get the money, they, work, they do match uh, more than 50%, as I recall, in almost every case, Sometimes. yeah. Um, and, then they, and then they execute, because I've seen the results of the work. So, I think it's a great program, and um, I just want to give you kudos for um, the way you come at it and how hard the NGLA members work at it. Thank you. All right, great, thank you. All right, so let's go ahead and vote on 8J. We have a motion. All in favor of approving the 2020 Neighborhood Improvement Program grant make recommendation, say aye. 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 All right, that, uh, nay. All right, that passes unanimously. All right, let's move on to 11A, Longmont General Improvement District Resolution. So uh, I actually move that we recess at the Longmont City Council and convene as the Board of Directors of the Longmont General Improvement District. Second. All right, let's go ahead and vote. All aye. in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Polly? Sorry, was that an aye? All right, that passes, un that passes unanimously. All right, now let's move on to 11A2 as the uh, Board of Directors of the Longmont General Improvement District. Um, we are ready to pass resolution LGID 2020-01, a resolution of the Board of Directors of the Longmont General Improvement District number one, approving an intergovernmental agreement with the Longmont Downtown Development Authority for Administrative Services. Do we have a motion? I'll move approval of, uh, is this a re resolution in this yeah. case, yeah. Uh, 202001. Second. Second. All right, that's been moved by Dr. Waters and it was seconded by Council Member Peck. Do we have any further questions, comments, or concerns by any council members? All right, seeing none, let's go ahead and vote. All in favor say aye. 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 All right, all opposed say nay. All right, that passes unanimously. 
Uh, I move that we adjourn as the Board of Directors of the Longmont General Improvement District Number 1 and reconvene as the Longmont City Council. Second. All right. It's been moved and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 All right. All opposed say nay. That passes unanimously. All right. Let's go on to 11B. Or uh, Mayor, yeah. we, we are not going to need to. We're going to pull 11B. All right. Sorry. 11B. All right. Let's move on. Uh, we obviously have no final call because we have no public here. Um, Mayor and Council comments. I do have a comment. Susie? So uh, actually, it felt like a month ago, but it was actually just six days ago. Um, I had the opportunity to um, attend the Landlord Training Alliance um, event. Um, it was under the direction of Susan Spaulding, our community relations specialist, and, um, and Joan was there as well. And um, it was really enlightening to hear, you know, I'm, I'm a renter, so I have my perspective, my viewpoint, but then hearing um, the multiple dynamics and facets of landlord-tenant um, relations and um, just kind of hearing comments, concerns, questions, and, um, and it was really, it was, I, I really enjoyed it. It opened my eyes and, you know, I'd really like to work. Well, one thing I got out of that evening was we need to clone Susan Spaulding. She's amazing. <laughs> um, so <laughs> that would be something I'd like <laughs> <laughs> in the near future. There is a motion to clone <laughs> Susan Spaulding. Do I have a second? So no. Um, so that was that was really interesting. Um, the other thing is, given the turn of events, um, you know, I was just amazed at the work um, Friday when I went to the emergency central that um, the city staff were organizing, putting together, coming up with plans, and how everything was just so real time and making immediate changes. I was thoroughly impressed and. I just I walked away just having a lot of confidence that we're going to be all right. We're going to City of Longmont. We're going to be all right. Um, and one thing though that I didn't see mentioned, and I know I've talked to, um, you know, I've heard from I think it was Dan Eman um, from the um, police, the public safety around um, people coping with trauma. And not just, but just over a period of time, we're going to be see, seeing a lot more people with PTSD, uh, secondary trauma as they start seeing loved ones and relatives hospitalized, just the fears. Um, yesterday, and that also felt like a month ago, um, I, I aided a, um, a young adult. Um, he ended up having, he was a, a Weld County resident, so we contacted authorities there. Um, he did end up acquiring a gun. And so we were working with the family to um, hand that over. And, um, and it was just, it was really, you know, just fortunately I have my assist training and I've kept that current. Um, but just having those resources and supports for our community as they start dealing with the, the long-term stress and irregularity that is our, our current reality. So that's all I have to say. Dr. Waters. Uh, we, we're getting information out uh, about what the city's doing, and you did a nice job, Harold. Um, but I think it's worth reiterating uh, what the decision that's been made regarding Next Light. Could you reiterate that? I know you've shared that. But in addition, uh, where, what our position is on, on renters and evictions and utility payments um, and any other obligation that, we, that is created by the city uh, that requires um, a payment by residents. So could you, could you brief us again on that range of decisions? So uh, Polly and Aaron, basically the question by Dr. Waters was uh, uh, essential services that the city provides like utilities, what's going on with payments? Yeah, so I'd, what I can tell you is we did put information out that, that said, um, you know, we are encouraging folks to pay online, use the Dropbox, um, but we do have folks that do pay in cash. And so if they're unable to do that, we're going to um, not have any shutoffs as we're moving through this process. Again, um, those that are paying and that can pay online or can drop their bills, we're really encouraging them to do that um, because we're also having to manage a fund as well. Um, but in those rare cases where someone can't, um, we're going to work with them. In terms of next slide and the information that we're putting out, 
Um, I believe the information came out midday today. I believe it's going to be uh, for those that really qualify in that CARES program and in that world, two free months, and then it'll be fourteen ninety nine a month for 25 um, meg. Under what conditions would we cut off electricity or water uh, to a resident? We wouldn't right now. Under none. Yeah. No circumstance. Yeah. That's part of the part of yeah. the point I wanted to make sure we got out. Right. One, one unrelated to that, but related to health and welfare. Um, uh, it, it's my understanding that the school district is going to continue to provide uh, the food service program um, distributed a little differently, right? Grab Correct. Go or whatever. Uh, what what do is is there a food service program next week during spring break? You know, it's changing right now. Um, I last I heard is there may not be, but I don't know for sure because there's a lot of guidance changing on that. Um, what I can say that we're working on is we are working with Mills on Wheels in, in terms of A, supporting their operation um, and ensuring that they can continue to move forward. And then we are also working to um, look at how we can take a bit of a surge during time periods. Um, more generally to the community, when you see a lot of the decisions that are, that are moving, we know there's going to be more of a demand especially when you look for folks that are in that high-risk population. Yeah. And so when you hear us talk about all of these teams, that is at the forefront of our conversation right now, is how are we prepared to handle that increase and how do we move forward? My last comment would be, I, I, I also, we all have had a chance to, to meet with uh, Harold and his uh, key uh, team members. I don't know who all, ever, others met with, but I think you all met with Harold. And uh, I, I like like uh, Council Member Hidalgo Ferring. I'm I'm proud uh, to be part of this in this in the small way that I, I am proud to be part of the operation. You, are, you all and your team are doing an Thanks. unbelievably good job in my view. I'm proud of you. Thanks, mm -hmm. Councilor Martin. Thank you. I uh, concur with what Dr. Waters just said. I just also want to say, um, from those of us who have been working to spread the word because sometimes it's not as easy to find something on the city website especially with the current rate of change uh, that uh, uh, we've had a window into just the herculean efforts that the city staff is making to keep abreast of things and when the rules change uh, two or three times a day sometimes um, every time i've called uh, someone in authority in the city and it's usually the city manager um, it feels like calling into the situation room at the white house only much smarter yeah. and uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> they are just uh, doing an amazing job of of finding all of the places all the unintended consequences uh, of the emergency measures that are being taken and I just want to say that you are all really lucky to be living in Longmont. Mm -hmm. One more thing. So nope, you've already had sorry. your turn. I sorry, Susie, go ahead. Email, email the e-notifications. If you have the opportunity to get on the website, I went on and I um, subscribed to that. So every time that they added a news um, update, I get it on my email. So that would, that's another thing that I would recommend to the public. Now. Polly, do you have anything to say? Actually, sorry, sorry, Joan. It's okay. okay, Polly, do you have anything to say? <laughs> no, just everybody stay well. All right, she said no, everybody stay well. Aaron, do you have anything to say? Sure, I'll say. Hold on one second, let me get ready. Go ahead. This could be the last sure, thing I like ever say, it. Aaron. Make it good. Last thing I ever say, got it. Uh, first of all, I just wanted to say that as I've been telling people, uh, be smart and not scared. You know, don't panic by. Well, Self-quarantine if you need to. And please, please continue to support our, our local businesses and restaurants. As obviously we know, uh, they're, they're going through some difficult questions about how they're going to handle this going forward with uh, the, the edict from Governor Polis yesterday. And uh, that being smart also is the reason that I'm sitting here at home tonight and not there with you guys, and I wish I could be. And I just want to wish everybody a happy St. Patrick's Day as well. All right. Thanks, Aaron. Councilor Mayor Peck. Thank you, Mayor Packley. I just want to reiterate what everyone said about the city staff and how incredible they are in running our city. And um, 
This is the second big thing after the 2013 flood. Now we have this pandemic. So if they uh, continue to run the city like they did through the flood, we can have every confidence that it's going to be done well. The other thing I want to um, say is to, uh, we are a community, but I think in times like this, we need to be a smaller community. So if you can reach out to your neighbors, keep in contact with them, make sure that they know that we support each other. If anybody in your neighborhood needs anything, let it be known that through social media, phone calls, texts, keep in touch with each other so that we can uh, all take care of each other. Um, I do have a question. It has to do with permits that are being issued for developers. We've had some questions about the public hearing process. Um, are we going to be through planning and zoning be having public hearing on these issues or not? We, we just made the decision, um, at least on the recent one, based on some guidance and, and conversations with the developer that the, the planning commission meeting next week, they are going to cancel that one. Okay. Um, but I think that's a joint conversation because really, frankly, I think everyone's struggling with this. Exactly. Um, in, in terms of permits, what we are saying is, you know, here's the reality of the world. Um, if your hot water heater goes out, you're going to need to replace your hot water heater. And, and so because we're closed, we're asking that folks, and we're, getting, we're going to get more guidance on this, that you um, go in, you do your plan online, um, and then we'll work you through the process, and then we'll inspect whenever we can. Um, so, but in terms of those public hearings, what, I've, what we've said is those that really require and need public engagement, we're just working with folks and pushing, pushing those off. Okay, thanks for uh, retelling that. All right, I guess I guess my I guess my thoughts. I want to echo. First of all, thank you, staff, um, having visited the EOC Emergency Operations Center. I think you guys are doing great. Um, also, big thanks to Kaiser, uh, Dr. Amy Ducro, as well as uh, their president, um, uh, Forgot the his governor. Name. Um, uh, everybody seems to be doing great. However, something that I just as I observe is uh, I just would call that uh, everybody's attention that. I mean, balance is needed. Um, on one hand, you've got a group that uh, I keep hearing saying this is a conspiracy, it's no big deal. And then I'm also hearing a call for social, social isolation, meaning hole up in your homes and don't come out no matter what. Um, I think that, uh, uh, I think that uh, as you look at this, um, the, the, the word pandemic in the news media, uh, this is really a scary thing. Um, uh, to me, what's scarier is now we're starting to see some of our food, so food service workers who are unemployed. I'm getting phone calls and emails about, oh, my gosh, how do I pay rent? And even if I don't have to pay rent, how do I eat? Um, so this is, this is probably going to get worse, you know, economically. It's going to get worse. Um, right now, uh, the numbers, Governor Polis has put up, uh, there's a website, covid19.colorado.gov. Every day at four o'clock, he's getting updated. Right now, we have 183 known cases. And we could argue about whether or not people are getting tested or this or that, but we do also know that there were 20 hospitalized, and of those, we've had two fatal cases. So while this is extremely serious, extremely serious, and that's why we are here with 10 people in the room, practicing social distancing of six feet, um, washing our hands, making sure we're trying to not touch our face, but I'm, I've seen everybody just pawing their face tonight, and I cringe every time I or any of you do it. But um, my, my point is that uh, there, there's, there's a second disaster that could be looming, which is if we fail to stop uh, supporting our businesses, which have employees, um, there, there's, I mean, being hungry and, uh, is just as bad as being sick, oftentimes. So look for a balance, stay healthy but uh, also don't be scared um, be smart and and not scared as Aaron said I really echo that um, also um, I would also encourage people uh, I wish I had answers to uh, to uh, people who have lost work I wish I had answers to the restaurants who are uh, struggling the small businesses who are struggling I would just encourage everybody now more than ever uh, turn to each other rather than on each other it's fine to argue about whether or not uh, what you should or should not do to take care of the virus, um, that's fine. But uh, if, if your neighbor doesn't have tampons, help them get some tampons. If they're out of TP, 
give them a roll of toilet paper. If they don't have eggs, give them some eggs. Um, if somebody needs uh, or is hungry, give them one of your 500 cans of Hornell uh, uh, hamburger chili. Um, just help each other through this. And when we get through this, on the other side, we'll figure out how to fix it all. But uh, the way we keep our community and society safe is loving and be kind to one another. And so I would reiterate that. So uh, Harold, do you have any comments? Uh, no, Mayor. Um, I think what I would say based on what everyone's saying tonight, thanks, thanks for your comments. And really, we have a great staff here that does an amazing, they do amazing work on a daily basis. Um, and as I said to them, I couldn't be prouder to actually work with a group like this and to see what they're doing. What I will continue to say, this thing has changed fast on us. Um, yesterday, I was prepared to go into a WebEx and speak to, I think we ended up connecting with five to 600 of our staff members. Literally 20 minutes before going into it, the, thing, every t the talking points I had flipped on their head. And, and so that's in large part what we've been dealing with. I think what I will say in this is many of the things you've talked about, that's, we're already trying to shift and to look at what is the secondary, when you're trained in emergency management and you see this, we talk about secondary issues, secondary disasters. When you see the teams that we're building, that's really what we're focused on. And, and we're trying to look into the future and really see what can we do, what programs are there, how do we do this. We are fortunate. We have. Charlie Cross, Peter Gibbons, and our organization that have really, in terms of recovery, gone out and taught different people in the nation about this process. This afternoon, we're starting to engage them in different activities. Um, it's going to continue to be a challenge. The thing that I would ask the council or ask the community, we have tried to really approach this from a pragmatic standpoint, understanding what's coming at us, make decisions, balance all of the issues. Some people will say we didn't do things fast enough. Some people will say we're doing two th things too fast. The reality of the situation is there's not a right decision. We're just trying to make them the best that we can based on the information. What I've asked staff is to remain calm, don't panic, wash your hands, follow the hygiene principles, and at the end of the day, how do we take care of our neighbors? How do you look at the person that lives down the street from you that may be in that high risk category? And how are you engaging with that individual to say, how can I help you? Um, it is incredibly important for us today as a global community, as a national community, and as a local community to really come together and focus on how do we deal with these issues and how do we deal with the issues that are to come? Because if we don't do that, it's going to be hard to be successful, but if we do do that, we can be very successful. I heard something last night, and I wish I could take credit for this. Um, Tom Calicchio, who's a chef, that talked about what's the impact to local restaurants. And he said, it wouldn't surprise me to see 60% of local restaurants not be able to reopen. He said something that was really important that I sort of grabbed, and he said, and Tom's in my generation. He said, this is our generation's version of World War II and the Great Depression. And how we work through this issue will define us. It's really how all of us work through this and how it defines us as a community. That's what we're trying to do as staff. Thanks, Harold. Bas uh, Polly, Aaron, you didn't hear, but Harold basically said that this whole mess is your fault. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> all right. Eugene smiled. Nobody else did. They're, they're just too serious. All right, Harold, or, uh, Eugene, anything? No comments, Mayor. All right. Do we have a motion to adjourn? So moved. So moved. So moved. All right. All in favor, say aye. 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 All right, aye. We're adjourned.